What's up, Sean? What do you think the legacy of the DCEU will be in 10 years after there's a lot of foresight and distance from the end of the franchise? I I feel like it's it's one of these it, it'll be perceived of as this very odd failed experiment of just weird studio management. Cuz it like it's it's so weird if you stop and think about it. The whole thing started because during the writing process of The Dark Knight Rises, David Goyer got writer's block took a week off to do something else. And in the middle of his week off, just kind of came up with this pitch for a Superman movie, took it to Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan liked it. And after the dark night, Christopher Nolan walks in the door and says, I've got an idea for a Superman movie. Warner brothers, of course, is going to say yes. So they said, yes. Now he didn't want to direct it. He didn't want to do it himself. But he walks in with this thing, and so then he shepherds and produces the first era of Zack Snyder movies. And like he's like part of the guy that picked Zack Snyder to do these deals. But I watched Man of Steel last night. I mean, this story by David Goyer and Christopher Nolan. They marketed that movie like crazy with Christopher Nolan's name on it. You don't in, at all associate Christopher Nolan with anything they've current been doing it for years. Um, and, and so it's just a very weird universe where they could, and it's, it, the movie starts off with Jor-El on a space dragon being chased by, uh, a spaceship. It's weird. It's sci-fi. And then, you know, we're, we're doing Blue Beetle and we're doing like, it just, it with like, it didn't stick to anything. And so it just feels like this very haphazard duct tape together thing where they kept saying, yeah, Zack Snyder, do your thing. Yeah, make a, make a Superman movie. Now make it a universe. Make a, we get right, we gotta do our Justice League. Hurry, get to the Justice League. Do the second movie, Batman v Superman with Wonder Woman, Cameo from the Flash, Doomsday, Death of Superman, all in the second movie. We gotta get to the Justice League. Well, that was too dark. Wow, that movie where you killed Superman got really dark, Zack. What happened here? What, can we lighten up your Justice League movie? We got to fix this thing. We got to fix. And they just went like crazy. And then like we do an Aquaman movie and it's very goofy. And then from there, it just goes, everything's a standalone story. And so it just, they never committed. It never, like it, after the, you got past the Snyderverse side of it, it never felt remotely cohesive. And so it, there was no consistency in quality or audience. Whereas with the MCU, there for a long time, I wouldn't say this is true now, but for a long time, they're made for everybody. With the DCEU, they're, they're not. They're like <laughs> different movies are made for different audiences. And like if you're really into Zack Snyder's Justice League or Batman v Superman, that is very different from Aquaman. <laughs> like there's not not a lot of tonal overlap, really. Or even, the, the, like, people will call Zack Snyder movies pretentious because of the way that he, he does big themes, but he's not like a big philosopher. That's not Aquaman at all. That's not Birds of Prey at all. And so it just, it feels disjointed. And I think that's what people are going to look at it, look back on it. And I imagine that there'll probably be some confusion because um, there's confusion now, but, like, people look back and they'll be like, oh, yeah, like, that's right. These like these later ones were actually connected to the early ones. It'll feel like that way because the Zack Snyder movies are so distinctly the Zack Snyder movies and Wonder Woman fits in that really nicely. And then you get to Wonder Woman 84 and it feels like the goofy new thing. It, like it doesn't fit at all with where with what the Wonder Woman was before. And then the Flash is that same kind of lighter, goofier tone. I, I, I like the movie, but. Um, it, there's very dramatic change from the darkness of the Snyder era and the bright colors and lightness afterwards. And so people will probably not even view it as a single thing. And it kind of, it, it, it's not. Technically it is. Technically they're in continuity with each other, but they're, they're not the same. And that's why you, you see that on the internet. You see that in the divisions, but... I don't know. It it'll be interesting to see the conversations, and I bet a lot of it will be about um, 
it's also tough to know how to be perceived without knowing how at all how the DCU is perceived. If the DCU works and they, they figure out how to have a cohesive DC universe that has variety but has consistency, if they, they do something that has some of the success of the MCU, I don't know, it'll be compared. Then again, will the DCU be the thing that everyone says is better but it came after the comic book movie bubble burst. Look at how many comic book movies, even from the MCU, flopped this year or dramatically underperformed. Maybe the bubble has burst and it's no longer what it was before and it never will be again. And the DCU is just too late. I don't know. But it, it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. Most of these clips are pulled from my Patreon live streams. I do about six live streams every single month for $2 per month, $20 per year. You can get access to all the exclusive videos and live streams for $5 per month. You get your name on my end card. At the top tier, you get a 30-minute video chat with me each month. The link down below in the description has more information.